Hi, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, thanks for uh, staying with us. I'm still trying to recognize the guy with that nice uh, hair in the right of the stage. I don't know where you pulled this uh, picture, but please keep uh, using it uh, for uh, so I look uh, good on uh, Google uh, images. Uh, so we have an amazing uh, panel with uh, three, probably three biggest uh, disruptors of uh, storytelling uh, in our uh, day. And uh, it's part of a very big uh, other trend we're seeing. So I'll start with a question uh, maybe uh, to the audience. Uh, how many of you are using, uh, are watching TV regularly? You can admit it, it's still not. How many of you have Snapchat? Now, it, please raise your hand. If I had to ask you, you had to give, give up one of the two. Either no more Snapchat or no more TV. What would you give up? Okay, now I asked the same question to a 13-year-old, the daughter of Shaul Olmert from Playbuzz, who's here. And her answer was, I'll give up TV every day. But it was more about it was undoubtful. And now the same age group are very big with uh, musically. But also every other audience is uh, consuming stories in a very different uh, way. We have, um, again, three of the biggest success stories here. And it will be great to learn some of their uh, insights. So maybe we start with a quick round of uh, introductions. Uh, we'll start here with uh, Alan. Hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Alan Lau. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Wattpad. Uh, Wattpad is an entertainment company. Uh, we have an app that lets people discover and share stories from science fiction to romance to fan fiction and everything in between. And we have 45 million monthly users using this app. 45 million? 45 million. Every month? Every month. And we also have a division called Wattpad Studios. Uh, Wattpad Studios partners with the entertainment industry to co-produce the most popular stories on Wattpad with built-in audience and turn them into TV shows, movies, print books, and other platforms. And, uh, if you look at it, 45 million is a lot. So you're, uh, in a sense, uh, we know all the, for instance, Board as a big publisher, uh, Random House, Penguin, all the big publishers in the world. Uh, they used to be the gatekeepers. So you are now j not just aggregating, but you're also the outlet for the uh, stories yeah, that, themselves. That's right. We are co-producing TV shows with uh, Turner and NBC Universal in the US. We are also co-publishing uh, books from pretty much uh, all the major publishers, including Simon Schuster, uh, Harper Collins, and, and a few others. Excellent. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Alex Hoffman. I'm the president of Musical.ly in North America. And Odette, you asked the question about Snapchat, so maybe let me ask the question. Um, could you show me your hand if you have downloaded Musical.ly? OK. So first of all, thank you. Um, for the others who are not familiar with Musical.ly, it's an uh, entertainment social network. So a user can take the app, create a 15-second long video, and then pretty much like on Facebook, share it on a timeline. So their friends or followers can like the video, share it with their friends, and engage with the video. Um, it's been really a fast-growing app. Um, around 170 million people downloaded the app around the world. And I'm actually quite excited that uh, Germany is um, one of the fastest-growing markets right now. So we are just in the process of opening up an office in Berlin. And um, I'm based in Los Angeles. And the majority of our team is actually in Shanghai. Yeah. Now, uh, today we know Musical.ly as the messaging karaoke kind of uh, hybrid, which maybe for people my age, you need a little minute or two to explain the logic of that combination. But uh, for kids, the age of my kids, they, they, it's a no-brainer for them. But now you're much more than just the yep. karaoke thing and doing more in video. Maybe can you say a couple yep. of sentences about that? No, it really started that the majority of our users used it to lip sync to a certain song or to a sound clip or a, uh, a film. And what we're seeing right now is really that other categories are growing extremely fast. So for instance, uh, um, one of the apps that is now going away, uh, Vine, um, a lot of Viners joined Musical.ly and are now creating comedy content on Musical.ly. A lot of people dance, a lot of people sing, 
And really, it's just fascinating for us to see that uh, people use Musical.ly in ways that um, are very different to how it was one, one and a half years ago. And when you say people, you mean girls? Um, yeah, around 70% of the Musical.ly users are female. Um, but we're getting more and more male users right now. But one of the but things I guess that the boys are watching it to watch the girls perform, right? Yeah, it might be one of the reasons, yeah. But this is actually some of the nice things. That's an observation I heard before uh, today, that it's also girls communicating <laughs> with the girls uh, kind of thing. So uh, they have their environment, which is uh, great. And I have to say to the audience, and again, that's an insight from my friend Uri Levanon there, that every social network that succeeded was appealing in the beginning to female audience. So uh, obviously, uh, you guys are there. Uh, Rene, so uh, you're now responsible in charge of all the non-linear media at uh, Disney. Before that, you were uh, president of uh, Maker uh, Studio International before, during, and after uh, the sale. Maybe you can introduce yourself a little bit, what you did before also. I mean, you did the introduction very nicely. So I was acquired into Disney uh, with the Maker acquisition. Um, and it has been a phenomenal experience to be with Disney the last two years, talking about storytelling. I mean, they're the world champions by far when it comes to, to storytelling. So it's a great experience coming from entrepreneurial startup environment to be into such an established machine of storytelling. Yeah, and uh, Maker is also an example of... Uh the disruption more uh, to the TV industry, and now it's part of Disney, which is a huge I think Maker, brand. Maker was, uh, I mean, very similar to mu Musical.ly, part of the democratization of uh, talent and uh, of, of content making, right? You had a platform like YouTube, or you have a platform like YouTube, and you, if you have any skills of any creative sort, you can actually succeed on YouTube. And that was kind of where Maker was born. Uh, and that was very much the philosophy of the company. Yeah, and uh, that I think uh, that will probably lead the question I'd love to hear all of your, uh, the, the thoughts of all of you about is, uh, well, sometimes you can talk about the democratization of the talent as uh, in more a cynical way because it's just new gatekeepers, etc. But all three companies, have you really use a, a distributed network of creators? It's not a label or a publishing house or a production company that takes five, six, 10, 50 talents and produce them, but you bring an opportunity uh, to leverage uh, talents everywhere to create the content and engage other people. So we'd like to hear a little bit about how you did that. Uh, start with Alan again. Yeah, so um, uh, my company started 10 years ago um, because I love to read, so I created a mobile reading app for classic books. That's how it started. And then uh, once we built the, the audience, we uh, leveraged the, the audience to attract people to write original content. That's the... Uh, a uh, very um, interesting inflection point of the company when we first saw the, the first piece of content uh, uploaded to, to Wattpad uh, seven years, uh, eight years ago. And then it grew from one to two to four and it multiplied up to today. On an average day, we have about uh, half a million chapters that people upload to Wattpad. Half a million chapters every day. Every day. Every day, you know, I did the calculation. If I print them off, like on paperback, and stack them up every two weeks, that's one new Mount Everest. So we have more. Uh, uh, please don't, really depends please on the don't quality of the paper. How many trees we have saved, right? Uh, so um, the uh, half a million chapters every day was created by 2.3 million monthly creators for the 45 million uh, monthly audience. So we have that machine. Uh, user-generated content machine going really well for quite a while. So we, we don't really need to uh, approach content from a very top-down uh, um, approach because what I like, you know, it's not necessarily resonating uh, with the audience. And when we bring the, the great stories uh, to NBC Universal, Paramount, or our partners, and uh, one thing very, very important is, is that all those stories, they have the built-in fan base and audience already. They are proven. I bring to Turner, not because I like the story, it's because a million people, they love the story. And did that help you grow the audience more than the mass you had when you started uh, getting contributions? 
I mean, you said first you had the audience, then you got the contributors. How yeah. did that affect uh, the audience, the uh, size of it? They, they did the new re uh, contributors eventually help you get a yeah, larger yeah. audience? Yeah, yeah, it goes into that cycle because uh, classic books on mobile is a very niche uh, audience, but once we have that tiny user base, we attracted the uh, writer. Uh, and that, those writers, they create different type of contents, from, from uh, science fiction to fan fiction to uh, interesting uh, fantasy story about a celebrity, you, you name it. And once we have so many different genres and, and subgenres that we couldn't possibly imagine, mm -hmm. that creates that. So uh, that's it, a little network effect. That's that, right. Uh, that's exactly uh, how the network uh, grew from you know, get out of the chicken egg problem, you know, to become a network that we see today. Amazing. So the network effect obviously is part of what uh, made Musical.ly as big as it is. And uh, can you say maybe in percentage how many of the users actually create and share content? Yeah, it's actually... Because um, we know there's more consuming than creating, but yeah. I have a feeling in you, you have probably some rock and roll statistics about that. Yeah, it's actually, um, it's really a a crazy amount of um, people creating content on Musical.ly. So it's uh, roughly 25% of the users actually create content, and that is an extremely high number. So the good thing is that creating uh, content on Musical.ly is actually quite easy. So you can all of a sudden create videos that look really, really cool. So for those of you who have not downloaded the app yet, um, please check it out. And what you will notice, it's extremely entertaining, the content, and watching it just really usually brings a smile on your face. Oh. Excellent. And uh, Rene, also, uh, same question to you, more or less. How many, or I mean, maybe you could say a little bit before the Disney deal and uh, after, because Maker was built on uh, people contributing uh, their videos and aggregating a lot of uh, creators. Now it's part of a big uh, media company as well. Um, how does that change the way you source uh, talent? Uh, you, you do the same but with more resources or it becoming more like a media company with gatekeepers? How? There's a lot of questions in that, that one question. But there's, no, there's no doubt that the majority of the content that you find on platforms like YouTube and that Maker worked with historically was pretty poor, right? It's not really interesting for, for, for the masses or even for the niche audience. And if you start looking into stats and what's valuable, what you can monetize and where the great stories and content come from, it's the usual, you know, 10% of, of, of the content has a quality that you can actually start building on. So it has always been the strategy of Maker, even before uh, Disney, to focus all our data and, 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 and resources on the 10%. Mm -hmm. That's the, 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 the content that we invest in, and that's the content we are, we are trying to monetize. Being part of, of, of Disney, that's all you do. Yeah. They don't really care about the rest, right? Because it's all about finding the talent and the great storytellers, and then trying to monetize that. And any entertainment company uh, of, of success are monetizing in a 360 model, right? You start with the great talent that are telling great stories. You might then produce content on different platforms. When it's Disney, it's studio. Uh, when it's Maker, it's to YouTube, or you know your talent, do it on Wattpad. And then you start monetizing it across yeah, licensing, so, so products, books, uh, TV series, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then you s continue in the same loop. And we're trying to do the same. So that's what you always tell me when you teach me uh, the 360. Model. I mean, here's the thing. You know, any business model needs to start with a lot of audience. The next very important thing is the engagement. People need to engage with the audience, right? If you have those two components, you might look into where's the value from a commercial point of view. And that's, that's kind of the, the trick. Everybody has difficulty with the last part. But in a way, and this is something I want to ask uh, Alex, because eventually 25% of uh, the users uh, create content. Even uh, uh, with the Wattpad that we have uh, millions. Eventually it will be, even if so it's democratized and so on, you have your prime real estate uh, areas, and some gatekeeper will be there. Maybe in the examples of Musical.ly and Snapchat, it's a 
27-year-old uh, moderator who decides what's going in and out. Can you avoid being uh, the gatekeepers? Or it will have to uh, come closer somehow to regular uh, media uh, companies. What do you mean with gatekeepers? Gatekeepers, I mean, is that uh, you have your uh, prime uh, real estate and you decide what content will be there. Yeah. So that means, in a way, it changes. It's not all viral and whatever is uh, trending from your audience. You need to make some decisions as well. So we're talking about the uh, democratization of talent and so on, but there's a limit to that, obviously. Yeah. I mean, we do quite a few things to influence what kind of content comes on Musical.ly. Um, so we have different levers within the app where we, for instance, right now really emphasize comedy. So we want that this comedy content gets on the app. Um, and we will later on focus on other categories, whether it's fashion or um, sport. And uh, same question also to um, Alan. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I try not to be the gatekeeper as much as possible because I strongly believe that what I like may not be what uh, hundreds of millions of people out there would, would like. So um, what we do is uh, we let the community uh, decide as much as possible what, what they like. But what, moving forward, what we're going to do um, as uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence becoming more uh, important in, in our lives, uh, what we want is the machine to be able to detect the next uh, Harry Potter, the next Hunger Games as early as possible and then leverage the power of the community to help that uh, those stories to grow faster, get more audience, spread as virally and, as possible. And how, how do you do that? Do you have their, your own logics and analytics system, uh, etc., yes. or uh, you're just counting likes on Facebook? Or uh... um, You know, we, it's a bit of both. It, it cannot be 100% machine. I just want to emphasize, you know, uh, I, I don't think the machine in this case should or, or could ever completely replace human. But what I'm saying is using machine to help the community to discover the great stories as quickly, as early as possible, so that we can see more great stories coming from the fountain of Wattpad. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And uh, do you, in both cases as well, that's an interesting point. How do you try to the source as well? How much is it machine people versus the community, more or less? I, I agree with Alan. I mean, it needs to be the yin and yang, and you use data to predict what will happen with these talents. If they take all the boxes, you will definitely have human beings looking into them, maybe training them to even improve and, and, and get better. I mean, that's, that's, that's a model that, that we all use, and I think data is, and, and, and AI is, is so important for all of us to spot the talent, even before they know it themselves that they have the ingredients to become big. And, you know, one day we'll succeed. It's, it's not, you know, something that, that we have been very successful in yet, but it's coming. And I, and I think just want to add, I think data is, uh, in a way, always backward looking. If we want to be innovative, if the community, they, they want new type of content that didn't exist before, the data would not be, be helpful. That's why it has to be a combination of machine and, and human. Absolutely, I think it's a great uh, it's a great insight. By the way, that uh, essentially, if you're doing something new, you need to find a new ways to uh, uh, to measure it. Uh, that's great, and that's we're talking about more the science and numbers in that part. But now I want to ask something else, more uh, gestalt or just about the dynamics uh, behind it, because uh, what we've seen and we've seen it also in. Uh, in Facebook, you mentioned Vine and uh, everything else, even uh, Playbuzz. Has anybody been to the Playbuzz show today? Yeah, a lot of... Uh, so Playbuzz, uh, which is also the disruptor of uh, the publishing uh, industry, uh, got amazing uh, share rates. I'm one of the lucky investors in that company. And what we learned there is that even if somebody's doing a personality quiz, and the result is that in his uh, past life, he was a Renaissance artist, they feel they see something about themselves, so a lot of them will share it. Of course, this is a more esoteric example, but you will do it also on more serious topics and just other ways to tell a regular story. But people feel more involved when they're asked questions and they communicate with the content source, and that's how they express themselves. Of course, it's bigger integration when you write a book. But how do you feel, how do you see the role of people want to express themselves and and get communities and followers and likes. Uh, how big is that power in your uh, business? In, in my case, is uh, 
very, very different than a, a tra traditional book because uh, all, all the writers on Wattpad, they, they upload chapter by chapter. All the content are serialized. And, uh, and our readers, uh, they are not passively reading. They comment a lot. They involve in the creative process. So on an average month, we have over 200 million comments. Sorry to interrupt you, by the way. Yeah. I do think that for some people, the readers who are more interactive, that's their way to express themselves. As somebody who's reading, who's more want to be editorial, who wants to be more literate, who wants to be involved, that's... Y yes, I, I think the, uh, you know, uh, Putting uh, the users into a creator or a consumer bucket, that's the wrong thinking, you know. Uh, the, the line between the two has become very blurry. Uh, in, in my case, uh, many of the content uh, consumer, they would create uh, covers for the, for the writers because you, you can write really well. It doesn't mean you are a visual artist. So... Um, and back to the serialization point, you know, uh, because there are a lot of uh, comments and the, there's a natural feedback loop. Every time you upload a chapter, you get the instant feedback and that actually changes uh, the, the storyline, uh, if you will, because the next chapter has not been written yet. So in a way, the, the content consumer, they are no longer passive consumer, they, they can have a lot of influence in the storyline, the visual effects, fan art, and all those other contents that is auxiliary to the main content, and they become part of the story itself. Uh, which I think is, uh, is amazing, phenomenal, this, and thanks. So that was educating for me, I hope, for the audience as well. Now, uh, self-expression and so on, I think yep. musically is probably the strongest example in the world these days for that. Uh, how much is that a driver and how much you want to m trying to maintain now when you're becoming more and more bigger and more yep. institutionalized, in a sense? I think right now, uh, self-expression is really important on Musical.ly and the amazing thing is to see that people start with a lip sync video but we have this one guy he joined Musical.ly at the age of 13 he's now 14 years old and he became so confident on Musical.ly that he said okay I'm going to release my own song so he released it on Musical.ly um, a few days later it was on the top 100 on Billboard the song and now in 2016 um, he's the most the nine most searched artist on Google uh, he's 14 years old he sells out shows with like 10,000 people going to a show. And uh, it's just really phenomenal to see that people start with something simple and then they realize, oh, I can actually express myself even more. And um, so really, uh, when you download the app, uh, please check out Jacob Sartorius. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. So um, he um, has around 15 million followers on Musical.ly. Um, who knows Drake? Anyone in the audience? The, yeah. So when Jacob Sartorius posts a picture on Instagram, he gets more likes than Drake. If you divide the amount of likes he gets um, by the followers uh, he has on Instagram, he's the number one uh, person on Instagram worldwide, getting the highest engagement by far, and he's 14. And what we are seeing as a result, so it really started... You're giving us all hope here, I have to say. Maybe, <laughs> no, no, later, it's just, it's just... Uh, maybe later everyone in the audience <laughs> wants, you can go download Musical.ly, do and then share it. Statistically, most of you will share it to your 200, 300 friends in the social network that you think you're ridiculous, but maybe one of you uh, will become a star as well. I think I'm, I'm, I'm actually, joking, but I mean, it's actually, a really I really like the idea. So let's do the following exercise. Um, if you create later a music video, please uh, post it with the hashtag DLD2017, and the video that gets the most likes uh, gets a dinner with you. Or something else. I'm we in, come, I'm we in. come up with I'm a nice prize. Um, First, I think it's a great <laughs> offer. And secondly, <laughs> even just the hope. I mean, statistically, again, you will upload yourself. Maybe some friends, uh, you know, the polite one will give you some likes. Maybe you will discover uh, something yourself. But if some of you will get more uh, likes, I'll be happy uh, to have uh, dinner. And I'm sure Alex would love to have that. And if yep. somebody wanted secretly to go to American Idol and so on, that world is a little bit, uh, can I say, dead on stage? So that's dead. So do hashtag DLD on uh, Musical.ly and uh, maybe we'll discover something. I think no, it's, it's also but good for actually DLD. Actually, it's true. So um, a lot of film studios are right now using Musical.ly to recruit talents for films. Uh, people try to, uh, not try, they're using it to recruit singers. Uh, one person was signed as the youngest model by the, one of the biggest model agencies in the world. So uh, if you post your music video later, um, it might be that someone will call you and try to get you on a Disney film. 
Well, I think it's too late for me to become the youngest model in the world, but uh, one of the youngest is still good enough. Yeah. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Renee, self-expression itself, maybe more in the early days of uh, Maker and so on, how big of a, t I mean, Special Maker uh, Studio was in the beginning kind of, uh, at least, I don't know if it was marketing or just genuine, it was sort of a movement, a collabor uh, cooperative and so on. It was everything. Uh, self-expression was all about YouTube in the beginning, right? Before the monetization models came about and everything about building carriers. But I think what is very uh, interesting is that we haven't touched upon and we have a little bit of time is, is the whole commercial model with Musical.ly, which I think is phenomenal, which is a very typical model coming out of Asia, by the way, mm. uh, that we in, in the Western world still haven't really got about. And I find that very fascinating. I don't know if you want to comment on that, and later on I can comment on, on, on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe just a brief comment. So Musical.ly actually has now uh, not just the Musical.ly app, but also Lively. Lively is a live streaming app um, that really gained a lot of popularity. And one thing that you can do on that platform, you can give a creator, someone who does live stream, a virtual gift. Um, so there are, are people who now quit their jobs um, and just live stream on Lively. And they make enough money to <coughs> live off that. And actually, it's, um, they do really well. Yeah. I mean, there have been stories that, that, that some kids are getting up to $10 million, uh, right, in, in, in gifts on their yeah. daily well, live performance. One, uh, There's one, one uh, uh, you know, boy in particular that, that I've heard of. Yeah. So there are, yeah. So actually, there are a lot of companies in um, China that focus on live streaming. And supposedly, there are people in China that make up to $10 million a year just by live streaming and by other people giving them virtual gifts. Now, so this is, uh, first, again, very educating. I'm, I'm overwhelmed with these uh, insights. But now, but I, uh, just a, maybe a little bit hard question. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, it's all disruptors. It's all using the power of the community, new forms of uh, storytelling, new gatekeepers for younger generation, for regular generation. But at the end of the day, I see now you all do deals with the big uh, Hollywood studios, except for the one that were already bought at the Hollywood studio. Is, so isn't that a step that at the end of the day will make you all either part of a corporate or part of a corporate economy? Uh, how, how do you see the future as a disruptor, so to speak? Yeah, I really like the, the way you described the 360. You know, uh, in, in our case, uh, we, we the, the core asset is our community. That, and that's the the foundation of everything we, we do. But it doesn't mean we have to limit ourselves to just that core asset. And if we can replicate this in other platforms, you know, and build the native apps on the other platform, you know, on a TV network, the native apps is TV shows, you know, the native apps on a movie theater is movie, uh, bookstore is print book, uh, and on YouTube or Facebook is uh, short form videos, right? So if we can take that content that, that we have and adapt to a diff different environment, then uh, we can nicely coexist. Uh, it is doesn't mean it's either or. And uh, you know, using one example, um, we have a very popular writer on Wattpad. Um, uh, her story generated over a billion chapter reads and millions of followers. And uh, when we partnered with Simon Schuster and turned it in, in the print book, and a lot of people were thinking, wow, the content is already free on Wattpad. Why would people buy this? They were that wrong. Um, that book was so millions of copies around the world, number one best-selling book in Germany, number one best-selling book in, in France, and New York Times bestseller. Uh, we are working with Paramount to turn this into a movie. So, um, you know, we, we can... Uh, nicely coexist and, and partner and, and do great things together. Great. And uh, Alex, same question. I mean, Lively is probably already a beginning of uh, the answer to it. But uh, how do you keep yourself as a growing disruptor rather than a, a component in the big media, big studio, Hollywood uh, economic ecosystem? We actually work with them, so we are in touch with the biggest media companies and looking into ways how no, but they how, can... But how can you keep yourself undependent uh, of them in the long run? Or maybe you cannot and eventually you will be sold to uh, uh, one of the big ones. Um, yeah, uh, right now it's really... <laughs> 
we can keep ourselves independent because we are growing really fast and um, all the data looks really good. Um, but we are partnering with all the big ones so that they can show their content on Musical.ly. So they benefit, our users benefit, and we benefit with that. So in a way, you're saying they're not doing uh, you a favor by giving you their uh, dollars, but you're giving them a fa you're doing them a favor by giving them the audience the, and the exposure. The, the big challenge for everyone is to stay authentic, you know, to your audience and to your talent and to your platform. At the same time, work with big brands, work with the big distribution uh, platforms that are outside the native environment where you're born. And that's a balance that, that everybody needs to find. I mean, you, you, you can't be a big YouTuber and then go do big TV shows if you don't st stay authentic because your followers will not uh, uh, continue and, and, and follow you to those new platforms. And it's the same with Musical.ly. If they will you know, change platforms, the talent, they need to stay very authentic to their original uh, programming. Yeah. yeah. And uh, maybe last question. We have about three minutes, so uh, we'll try to do it. Uh, 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 briefly, so uh, and touches uh, Renee's uh, last comment. So um, at the end of the day, things are changing in a very, very fast, fa uh, fast pace, which is just getting faster and uh, faster. How can you keep yourself uh, relevant in that uh, you'll still be the big uh, player in your uh, area? What so in, in another word, what are you planning? Maybe a little bit about your plans to the near future to support the growth of uh, your businesses, which shown been showing amazing growth? Yeah, I guess uh, um, what we've seen in the past 10 years is uh, how people con uh, create content and consume content has been changing really rapidly, and that will continue to be the case. So uh, for, for us, and I'm seeing my um, partner in crime here doing the same thing, is we have to uh, continuously reinvent how people create content and how people consume content. I can guarantee uh, people uh, 10 years from now, or f even five years from now on Wattpad, they would create uh, content in a very different way. Uh, they would create very different type of oh, content. Oh, I think in 10 years from now, the bots will read, moderate, curate the community, and create <laughs> it. We will just... Uh maybe connect uh, the bots to the power if yeah. we won't have wireless power. Yeah, perhaps right. the, the bots or, or the machine can assist the content uh, creator you. to do a, do, do a better job, right? So there, there are uh, so many things that we have to re keep on reinventing ourselves. Excellent. Alex, uh, what's the next big thing? So you, you started to talk about uh, Lively. That's where you guys are uh, pursuing your next wave of uh, growth. Yeah. I mean, one thing we are looking into right now is, um, you know, personalization of content so that uh, someone who is, um, you know, my age gets content that is relevant for someone in my age and someone at an older age gets content relevant to an older age. So that's one of the things we are looking into. Um, but like Alan said, we constantly have to innovate. So we have a user base that constantly wants to see something <coughs> new. Uh, they want to try out new things. So um, we are really focusing on really innovation a lot, bringing out new things for people to, to have fun with. Excellent. And uh, Rene? I uh, mean, I, I'm a strong believer that you need to constantly attract talent, cultivate the, the, the talent, and make sure that they develop and, and, and grow constantly. If you have the talent, then everything else will come. And that's the challenge with, with our platform and, and other platforms, that there's constantly new opportunities, right? And if you can't keep the talent, you will not survive in the growth that you need to, to, to have. Talent is everything. Yeah, I think, uh, by the way, that's an amazing uh, uh, statement to lock it. Talent is everything, especially in, uh, when you create, uh, when you have new forms of storytelling and people who want to tell the stories, if you want to create a big business in that area. So we all know content is king, but also uh, talent is king. So thank you very much. That was very educational, and uh, thank you guys for listening. <laughs>